Welcome back to the Just Fantasy Baseball Podcast. My name is Rami Lavi. That's Vince D'Amato. Vinny, I got a quick story for you to start here. This is a funny one. Um, so today, and so many leagues are like this, I look at my matchups and I'm like, huh, I don't like my Chris Paddock matchup against the Yankees tonight. I do like Luis Severino's matchup against the Mets today. Luis Severino on waivers. He wasn't available. He was on waivers. So I make that little quick swap. And I get the notification. This will commence tomorrow on Thursday. <laughs> so, of course, I still started Paddock in the lineup tonight. Severino throws eight shutout or eight one-run innings. Give up a run in the eighth. But eight innings, run, one-run ball. The Yankees are in the fifth inning. Paddock, I assume he's out of the game by now. <laughs> Gave up seven runs uh, as Aaron Judge just capped off that inning and still going. Still nobody out. So, uh, last I checked, the Yankees had scored seven runs. So, fun moment for me. That is a pretty funny story. And... I had kind of an opposite story. So I follow um, pitcher list quite a bit and they mm. have lists every day of who should you start today? Right. And they had in their do not start list, Adam Mazur for the San Diego uh, Padres, the, the recent call up. Right. And I thought to myself, I trust him a little bit. I think, I think he's going to make it work. And lo and behold, he goes six innings and allows just one earned run. So it's, it's such a weird game, right? You have all the analytics and the people who break down every little stat saying, you probably shouldn't start this guy. I still I still felt it in my gut, and I started him and paid off. So it's just, How about your streaming pitcher that you had uh, yesterday? Matt Waldron, I mean, out of, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great Mark outing Waldron, from him. right? Is that his Matt first Waldron. name? Matt, 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 yes. It's funny as I know a Mark Waldron. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see him in a week. So I know uh, Stephen Waldron. Hmm. Yes. Weird name. I, that's yeah. Random. All right. <laughs> cool story, bro. Yeah, let's start. Um, did let's you see uh, Shohei's first at bat against Paul Skeens tonight? This is a big Skeens podcast. Yeah. As we mm -hmm. know, we've mentioned it a time or two or a million. I saw um, his and I saw Mookie. Yeah. So Mookie. let's let's go there for a second. Uh, first sure. of all, um, because we're doing who's hot, who's not. So let's start. Let's do it the opposite. Let's start with who's not. Okay. Mookie Betts is really struggling right now. And I have a couple other headlines, but we'll throw them in as we go along here. Sure. Let me find those Mookie stats for you because over the last couple of weeks, it has been a struggle for my guy, Mookie Betts. Uh, he's one for his last 20. With That one happened to have been a solo homer, but one for his last 20 of 174 on base. And I know Otani's been struggling as well. Yeah, I don't have their numbers in front of me. He's still a lock for me. Uh, at least I'm, you know, both of them are. You just this is the season, right? They're gonna have hot stretches, they're gonna have cold stretches. Yeah, yeah, definitely that's baseball right season, right? Yep. Um, and you know what's crazy is the Dodgers are still is it five, six games in first place right now? And <laughs> two of their best hitters are ice cold, right? You know, for the last two mm -hmm. weeks or week or whatever. The it's just they're unbelievable. So I wouldn't read too much into it, but yeah, it's it's important to know, right? Maybe you have I don't know who's who's going to be a better option, but maybe if someone no, you're has a still better starting option, them every day. Yeah, them. yeah, yeah. But um, it's just worth it to note that if you're wondering, hey, my team's struggling. Why? Oh, because Mookie Betts, mm -hmm. probably your first over your first round pick, not playing particularly well. And uh, I had a couple guys who were cold, and I won't do deeper dives into them. But Jeff McNeil was one that I had thought of too. I know he's not rostered in as many leagues, but. I he's mean, been... I'd say cut him. He's benched three yeah. games oh, yeah. in a row. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I had this, I pondered this thought. Should the Mets leave him in Washington or leave him in New York? Or should they bring him to London and then just try and ditch him in London? Hmm. Not a bit. Maybe they lure him away with some, you know, a hot, I don't know what food they have in London that would, a biscuit oh, or crumpets. In London, dude. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's what I've heard. Food. Yeah, not good food in London. Have you All been? Right. No, never. It's not great. London... No. I mean, this is cool because like a sports trip. I know, you know, we're doing initiatives with the radio station. So Evan Roberts is flying out tonight who like hosts our afternoon show. And when the Jets go uh, later this year. So I think our midday show is going to London with them. So, yeah, we're doing a couple of London trips as a they didn't ask me if I want to go, but I don't think I want to <laughs> like I, London sucks. <laughs> I've been going to go at least one. Oh, you already went. So yeah, I've yeah, been. It's, to, yeah, yeah. All right. There's a, there's a clock. There's a tower. There's a there's a castle. The guards they don't do much. There's a river. There's a Ferris wheel. I mean, 
Maybe you, you push Jeff McNeil into one of the guards and then the guards seize him and arrest him and take him to the queen. And maybe you tell him that he's the, king, the new king of London. The queen's dead, by the way. Um, king. I see. He shows how much I know. I'm a stupid American. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that was one for you. Jeff McNeil you had another one. No, yeah, because I, I wrote down a few Jeff McNeil and then, I mean, Nathaniel Lowe. And but my the one that I am just I don't get it. I, I don't know what the hell is wrong with this guy is Mitch Garver. Like. He's got the lowest batting average out of qualified hitters in baseball at 167. That's even mm. lower than Randy Rosarena, who's at least giving you power and speed. Mitch Garver's giving you five home runs, just 17 RBIs. Like, I just, I don't know what, what his problem is. You you would think he's coming to a place where he doesn't have to focus on catching. He can just hit. All he's got to do is focus on hitting. And he just, he can't. I don't know if he needs to start catching again to figure it out, but um, Mitch Garver has been absolutely killing me in a couple leagues and, um, yeah, he he definitely 12 teams should be cut 15s. Maybe you're still holding. But um, yeah, if there's better options, because catching again, we've talked about it. Catching hasn't been as deep as uh, we really thought in the beginning of the year. So, mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah. So he's another example or reason as to why that is. All right. Well, let's go through who's hot real quick. I have two. Uh, one okay. is Nolan Gorman. Yeah, uh, that dude. I think mm -hmm. it's Gorman, right? Is it Gorman? Of course, no, I don't think so. I think it's Gorman. Right, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Sounds he cool. kind of threw me for a loop. I was like, I don't think it's Gorman. That would be cool. Cool sounding. This dude has five home runs, I think, in his last six games. I saw and four, yeah. twenty-three on base, seven runs, eight RBIs. I mean, if you're hitting that many home runs, you better be, you know, scoring runs. Um, went over four today, of course, but the dude has been like money good, and I see he's now up to almost eighty percent rostered in Yahoo Fantasy League. So people are catching on to Nolan. <laughs> Yeah, um, the one Cardinal that I will say I'm buying into a little bit more is Alec Burleson. He's been he's been a little bit hot. He's not my who's hot guy, but um, I'm buying Burleson a little bit. I'm not so much sold on Nolan Gorman. Got um, we'll talk about him maybe a little bit later. But um, my who's hot is Yainer Diaz for the Houston Astros. Back to the catching well. Um, I went catcher catcher here. I don't like this. I saw the account tweeted this out mm -hmm. yesterday. Yeah. But he has like a 170 on base in the last week. So he hit a couple of home runs yesterday. Like, big whoop. So that's, I mean, when you bought Yanner Diaz, it's, you think about Cal Raleigh, right? He's a low batting average slugger. And you almost, you don't care if he's going to hit 220, 230, if he's going to give you 30 bombs, right? 35 yeah, bombs. Yeah, but you're reliant the on the home runs. And if you're yes. waiting for the home runs to come. And they're here, right? Okay. This is... And my, my thought was this, and the reason why I like him is he doesn't strike out, right? I mean, mm. you mentioned, so his OBP right now, 277. He's not a high OBP guy, but his strikeout rate right now is only 15%, which definitely upper half of the league. Um, we love to see that. And his average exit velocity of 90 miles an hour, 90.6 is, is pretty good. So I, I'm i still buying Yanner Diaz if you can. I have him in the who's hot, but if he's a buy low potential candidate, um, I'd certainly be all over it because again, we can think about it like the Astros as a whole, right? The Astros as a whole have been struggling. He's, I, I kind of just lump him in with Bregman, Jordan. I, I expect all of those guys to get it going. Yesterday, I had a Nerfy parlay where I had three guys on one Nerfy or three teams on one Nerfy. One of them was the Braves and the Red Sox. And I saw Max Fried strike out the side in the first and make it look so easy. He had 13 strikeouts. In seven innings, and I went back. His numbers are insane. Over the last month, he has a one five three ERA. He is four and 35 strikeouts in thirty five innings, and a point eight eight WHIP. He's been ridiculous. And I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this one stat. And then we'll move along. But you see the Louis Heel stat. He has seven consecutive starts of six plus innings with one or zero runs allowed. That's the longest streak in Yankee history. Yeah, right. Like the history of the franchise. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's been around forever. And that's mm -hmm. that. So to me, uh, that's crazy. So Max Fried and, you know, obviously not available in any leagues, but Max Fried and Louis Hill. We'll talk about top tier starting pitchers a little later as we do have a fan question about that. But um, sure. both those guys are absolutely on fire right now. Um, you mentioned the buy low, sell high segment. So who is your buy low? My buy low is a guy who just came back from injury um, on an offense that, again, is performing a little bit lower than we anticipated, and that's Austin Riley. Mm. Um, he does, The power's not here yet. The average isn't really here yet, but I anticipate him. Think about, like, Rafael Devers, right? How did Rafael Devers start off the year? There was no power. He, he kind of looked not like himself, right? 
I always one of our buy lows. Yeah, this is this is like I, I think of them and their careers as like they're on the same trajectory. They're the same type of hitter. They're just consistent power. They they're phenomenal hitters all around. And so I think it's just going to take Austin Riley a little bit of time. I think he's prime by low uh, territory because it's it's not like he just forgot how to hit. People are probably thinking, oh, you know, he just came off injury. Maybe he's not going to be the same or whatever. I'd be all over it. Um, Austin Riley should certainly be um, a target for you right now. It's funny you mentioned the catchers. I think I mentioned this guy in the past, but I still want to buy low on him. That's Cal Riley. Like mm-hmm. at, you mentioned him earlier. He only has three home runs in the last month. So that's a guy who's like, all right, we need power out of you. We're relying on the power. I think the power is going to come. I still think it's going to come. Everything else is down with him too, but you're just hoping that he gets you that power surge. And it's like a law of averages. If you hit three home runs last month, hopefully he'll hit 10 this month, right? Um, And then that's how it goes. So catching is not great right now. And if somebody's like, oh, I picked up this guy for home runs, I drafted this guy for home runs, and he's not giving me those home runs, here, you take him. I trade for Cal Raleigh. Yeah, I, I did just trade for Cal Raleigh in a dynasty league not too long I love ago. That. Because I agree with you. I, I I thought it was a little bit of a buy low. Even though he was doing okay relative to the other catchers, I, I still I still agree with that. Um, I have a sell oh, high for you. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, before your sell high, have you seen the yeah. hobby bias stats? Um, I'm not sure I, I want to. I saw his incredible defense. Okay. No, no, no. This one particular stat with no runners on, he has a 134 batting average, one RBI, which makes sense. No, no runners on. He's not going to have a ton of RBIs. Um, and an eight OPS plus versus with runners in scoring position. He has an eight OPS plus, by the way. I've, that, that's crazy. That's Yeah. Uh, 390 batting average with runners in scoring position, 24 RBIs and a 153 OPS plus. We talked about this guy's like liking the yep. big lights, like the yep. stats bear it out. This guy yep. just loves the moment and otherwise he's just bored and doesn't give a shit. Like what? Yeah. 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 I, maybe there's, there's no other numbers to support that, but I, I fully agree with that. I, I just think that's who he is. Yeah. All right. Who's your sell high? My sell high is a guy that you just mentioned and a guy that we talked about last, was it last week, maybe two weeks ago when you mentioned the potential trade, Nolan Gorman. I mm. am uh, I am so far off Nolan Gorman, but here's the thing, right? He's going to have these stretches. This is where you cash out. I promise you, he's got a 35% strikeout rate. Like nobody's coming back. You know, Ellie De La Cruz isn't going to come back from a 35% K rate. Like mm. it, and the th- problem with Nolan Gorman, right? The difference between Yaner Diaz and Nolan Gorman, right? Yaner Diaz strikes out 15% of the time. He's a much better contact feel to hit um, than Nolan Gorman does. Nolan Gorman's just strict, straight power. And his average exit velocity isn't really that good either. It's only at 87 miles per hour, which is well below league average for Nolan Gorman. So the high strikeouts, the low EVs, I just, I don't buy it. I, I love, you know, ride the hot streak, whatever, but you, you cash out when you can. And you, I would go to a league mate and say, Hey, this guy's figured it out. You know, uh, I'll sell it to sell him to you. I'm looking for something else. Right. I'll package him. I think he's figured it out. I would cash out on Nolan Gorman uh, yesterday. My sell high is a guy who's been extremely hot uh, and is now rostered in almost 85% of leagues. And that is um, Ryan Mountcastle for the Orioles. In the last week, he's at four home runs, has nine RBIs, 370 on base. And my problem is when I was at the Oriole game, I was I was saying to who I was with my cousin, I was just like, he's not going to – like I just feel like he's not going to be on the roster or they're going to have to figure something out of that first base situation. I know right now they're platooning both, but Ryan Mountcastle has been get, getting the majority of the play because he's been hot now. So now's the time where you can trade him. I wouldn't even – you know, both Oriole first basemen – is kind of an issue for me because they're both really good. And I know, obviously we've talked about um, O'Hearn a bunch, Mm -hmm. but like, I just don't love the situation for either of them because they're platooning, but Mount Castle was hurt. He comes back from the injury. He's playing really well. Now is a good, first of all, if he gets traded from this team and they decide to go with O'Hearn, or I could see them as a target. I could see the Orioles being a prime candidate for a guy like Pete Alonso, by the way. Like mm-hmm. I could see them making a move. If, I, if I'm the Orioles, I trade for Pete Alonso and the or- and the, the Mets are trading Pete Alonso. I know the Mets, you know, they just had a sweep this series. 
in like probably two and a half games out of a wild card spot, which is crazy. <laughs> like to think that as bad as the season's been, they're like a hot streak away from being right back in it. That's what happens when you're in June. We talked about that a lot in the last episode. But Ryan Malcastle could be traded, could be moved, or could just lose playing time depending on O'Hearn if he gets hot. Or obviously, if they do decide, hey, we need that big bopper in the middle of the lineup, whether it's a guy like Pete Alonso, they really don't have, you know, the top of the lineup is nice with, with obviously you have um, Gunner and, and you have Adley. I get it, but you don't have like that bopper in the middle of the lineup who could just hit a bunch of home runs. I know Gunner is on a Santander. incredible pace right now. Yeah, yeah Santander, mm-hmm. okay. But like, yeah. For me, if they add a Paul Goldschmidt, who's not like the craziest home run hitter, but even a Pete Alonso, like that, that changes, that just lengthens the lineup so much to me. So uh, I could see them trying to upgrade that first base position. I, I like that too, because the, that brings to them a thing that they're lacking quite a bit, which is veteran leadership, yeah, right? Of they course. Don't, you know, I mean, I know they have Santander and Mullins and I Mullins guess you've been can, awful like, for but, them. Yeah. You, a guy who is a staple in your lineup who, you know, has been around the block. I don't know what the Mets asking price is going to be, but you know, I'm sure a lot of teams are going to be lining up for it and uh, we'll see what he ends up going for. Do you think then he'll be traded? It really depends. I mean, at this point, like what's he giving, like if the team's not good, what's he giving you? His stats are particularly empty this year. I yeah. know the stats look fine. I think he has 14 or 15 home runs. They've been kind of empty home runs. I, I, I know it all evens out, but I don't know. I just, if I'm the Mets, I think I trade him. I seeing him this year, you really have to think like, do I want to give this guy a seven, eight year contract and watching him this year and watching how bad and really just the things he says in the media where they asked him about the Jorge Lopez situation is just like, I don't know. Like you need a leader and it seems like this team lacks leadership and he might be part of that problem. I know he's really good friends with Jeff McNeil. I don't know how he's taking the Jeff McNeil being benched. Yeah. You know, so I, I just don't, I'm, I'm starting, I was keep them, keep them, keep them, keep them. If they don't turn it around and they have a month and a half, two months to turn it around. If they don't turn it around soon, I'd start looking for trade partners for Pete Alonzo. Yes. Okay. All right. And that's only going to increase his trade value. So maybe Pete Alonzo has a good buy low opportunity. Yeah. Right? Hey, I'll, right? I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, are we moving on prospect report or? Yeah. Give me your prospect yeah. report. So just a couple transactional things more than anything, um, things to watch out for. The Baltimore Orioles made two recent call-ups. One is Cade Povich, pitcher. Um, nothing super flashy. He's just kind of an arm. Um, if you have uh, 15 teams, if you're in a 15-team league, I would I would definitely look to stash him. Um, 12 teams, I'd probably be looking for a little bit of something first because it's it you know he could come up and get lit up and then – you know, you're kind of wasting that spot. So I wouldn't waste too much time on him because again, he doesn't have the upside that, you know, we've come to expect from a lot of these pitchers coming up, but Cabe Povich is an interesting name just to keep an eye on. And then they, the Baltimore Orioles also called up Connor Norby, um, second base guy, real small. He doesn't hit the ball very hard. He doesn't have the most fan fantasy friendly profile. And honestly, how I see this going is just like they did last year with Kowser and this year with uh, Kierstad. They're going to call him up, sit, you know, hang out for a little bit and then see you later. We don't need you. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Did, did they end up playing pet, uh, placing the kid on, uh, who was it? Was it Mateo who got Jorge hurt? Mateo. Yeah. Did they end up placing so him on, on the injured list? I believe so. I, I think did that you was. Did you see how he got hurt? No, I missed it. So he, he was is on the injured list. Cedric Mullins was warming up in the on deck circle and he started walking to the on deck circle and he caught the bat in the oh, head i did he, i heard about that watching. yes yeah i didn't yeah, see we weren't it sure we were at the game when we saw mm-hmm. mullen break his bat and when we saw that his bat hit mateo we thought it was when he slammed his bat down and shattered his bat and we thought the barrel went and hit mateo no that would have been really bad if he shattered his bat after like a bad strikeout and, and right that's how we heard him no he just when he was warming up he's just swinging around and that, that sucks yeah, so I mean Norby, he he doesn't run a whole lot. He doesn't hit the ball super hard. But also this, Mateo's this a lot of be playing back, time. So. Mateo's gonna be back. So I'm I'm not looking too much into Connor Norby. Um one guy that you could cut pretty much universally unless you're in a dynasty is Edar Julian, who got sent down by the Minnesota mm-hmm. Twins. This one crushes me a little bit. I mean, I wasn't super high on Julian, but yeah, I thought at least high. well, I thought OBP leagues for sure. I'm like, this guy's yeah. gonna lead off, he's gonna get on base. He hasn't even been doing that, he hasn't been getting on base at the clip that I expected him to or at least hoped he could do 
Um, so Julian sent down some good news though. Uh, Henry Davis called up back up uh, for mm. the Pittsburgh pirates. He was tearing it up in triple a um, someone that should pretty much be added uh, almost universally just for the upside alone. Um, he's got, you know, power and, and you'll get a little bit of speed from the catcher position. Um, I'm not quite sure where he fits in yet or how they're going to use him. If they're going to throw him behind the plate or in the outfield again. Um, so we'll see how, how the pirates plan to use them. Uh, Henry Davis and DJ hers was called up by the Washington nationals. Hers is a guy that um, I was extremely excited about maybe like two years ago or so. He's got nasty, nasty stuff. He throws the ball hard, but at the end of the day, he's was this he's corresponding a, to the Trevor Williams injury? Yes, yes. Okay, got it. And so, you know, this is like the Nationals putting a band-aid on, you know, a gunshot wound, right? They just they have nobody. So they're like, I mean, this guy had an over 60 RA in triple A. So mm. it, it's just he's not fantasy friendly right now. He's he's extreme bullpen risk. Um, think like maybe Mason Miller light or you know, Mason Miller extra light. You know, he's got good stuff, but he just walks way too many guys and I would say it's like a 70% chance he'll end up in the bullpen at some point. So I would not be rolling him out for starts. Don't get excited about, you know, prospect, you know, new guy, flashy new toy. DJ hers is not a guy that you want to be messing around with. Cause he could really torch you. It's funny. I used that same term earlier tonight on my other podcast. I called Marcus smart drew holiday light. So I don't know, just <laughs> kind of funny. Uh, is fun. Yeah. Well, yeah, we have a couple of mailbag questions specifically pertaining to trades. They're not mock trades. Um, but they're kind of pertaining to things we talked about. So first, Carlos asked, based on last episode, does it pay, or I guess this is two episodes ago, but based on last episode that we talked about this, does it pay to trade top-tier starting pitching for mid-level offense? Say we talked about Max Fried at the top. We talked about Luis Heal. And maybe even Luis Heal is not a good option because maybe you could say he's a sell-high candidate. But top-tier, you know, guys who are, you know, Zach Wheeler, done it in the league, right? Mm -hmm. Top-tier starting pitching and trade them basically for hey i like i just a guy who's gonna have a decent on base maybe a 25 homer guy with 10 stolen bases like middle of the road but solid reliable hitting considering how low hitting is um again it's, it's hard to answer this question without knowing team context uh, like my my knee-jerk reaction is yeah given you know if you have a, a lot of massive, people stream pitching and that's yeah. perfectly normal mm -hmm. and there's so many arms like you know we've talked yep. about it there's so many arms coming up and a lot of them are, are talented just um, contributing yeah and so i i would try to get a little bit more than just you know a middling bat like if you could even pair a pitcher with a bat and and try to get a better bat that's something i'm, I'm definitely looking into definitely try to swing some two for ones if you can um but good question because yeah you know like like we said the state of pitching is, is much better than hitting right now. So, um, and pitchers are volatile too, right? There's no, no yep. guarantee that all of them are going to stay healthy. So, um, yeah, if you need a bat, if you have a massive hole, like for example, I have a massive hole at first base in one of my leagues. Mm. Um, I'm thinking about trading Sonny Gray for, you know, um, a, an average first baseman because I just, I need somebody who's going to get me maybe some empty power, whatever that looks like. So, um, yeah, yeah, I, I absolutely would be interested. All right, and this comes from a Yankee fan. Uh, Joey Spellman wants to know, you know, we've, we've talked about trading Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge having a down game tonight. He's one for three. Uh, he has four RBIs and a run scored. But um, he said, what is a realistic and fair return for Aaron Judge if you do trade Aaron Judge? Wow. Well, you need – you're going to need – depends on the holes again right you're talking at least a top 15 bat I, I don't think you can go any lower than top 15 bat i mean because if you trade away aaron judge and you get like three you know top 50 bats like you're just not going to get your value oh, back sure. so you need i would say at least one top 15 bat and then probably like a top 10 starting pitcher um or maybe two top 20 bats or something that's for those those at. prices i would i would think yeah i'm, I'm moving i would say two like i would say like a buy low bat meaning one bat who's probably gonna be you know who maybe is a top sure. 15 bat coming into the year but isn't performing at that level i don't know look at a guy like julio rodriguez corbin carroll right yeah. i'm maybe not um, corbin carroll i'm thinking like austin riley like if you went right. if you you said vince i want aaron judge from you i'll give you austin riley and maybe bryce harper yeah yeah 100 percent for sure. I would take that. Okay. That, that, 
that works for me. All right, mm -hmm. that's going to do it for us. I have to head to work. So sure. yeah, go, <laughs> a go. Bit, yeah, a little bit of a shorter episode. Um, but yeah, I think we covered everything other than Royce Lewis, your guy. I wanted to give you a shout out because he had yes. that. Yes. Uh, so good for him. Good for Get you. Get used to it as long as he's okay. <laughs> You're going to be watching the London series or no, totally not? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll tune in. Um, I, I didn't check the game. Are they early games or how are they? I don't even know. You don't know. I think it's, I mean, I think it's like 6 p.m. their time, like 1 p.m. our time, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So 12 o'clock, yeah, I see noon, Phillies, yeah. Mets. Yeah. All right. Okay. Good to know. All right. Well, enjoy the day at work and uh, good. Yeah. Good until stuff. next time, like, subscribe, yeah. share the podcast. Appreciate you all for listening. Yeah. Bye.